Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Catholic Talk Show. Today, we're going to be reacting to some Joe Rogan videos about the Catholic Church. Yeah, Joe Rogan is the most popular podcaster in the world, but he has had some pretty controversial takes on the Catholic Church, and we're going to listen and respond to them so you don't have to. All right, let's get started, Joey. Ooh, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got a list, so I guess you got some videos queued up for us here. I do. Now, I'm going to say that I, I, I enjoy listening to Joe Rogan. I think he's a smart guy. I think he's done a lot for the podcasting, um, uh, just the whole podcasting world. I think he's set a lot of cast. I don't think he's a bad guy either. I think yeah. he's probably, you know, and I think he's a very intelligent man too. That being said, I think somewhere in his past he was pretty hurt by someone in his family and related to the church, so he has some pretty bad takes on the Catholic and Church. And it's visibly there yeah. when he talks about it. Yeah. And, um, and you know, we'll get into some of the things that are being said, but I think all in all, like the wounds really just come out with them. Yeah. And, and it's unfortunate because the church has wounded so many people. Sure. You know, and there's a lot of people that think like that. And, you know, it's, it's a very difficult situation to bring them back. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> sometimes Joe Rogan talking about the church sounds like listening to your buddy's older stoner brother talk about the church and like, no man, it's all this and that. Like <laughs> it just kind of feels like that a little bit, just kind no, of like man. uninformed views that are very, very, you know, uh, laced with, laced with venom anger. and anger. So yeah. now before we get into it, I just want to tell you, you can go to catholictalkshow.com and there you can subscribe to us on every platform. You can follow us on all the social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, now known as X and TikTok. Or you can, if you're watching right now on YouTube, make sure you go down there and click that like button and that subscribe button. That's one of the best ways that you can help us in our ministry and help us grow and reach more people. Also, if you want to support the show and help us to grow that way, you can go to catholictalkshow.com forward slash Patreon. There you can find all the different ways that you can support us all the different tiers. So anywhere from just a couple bucks to something more generous. And in our gratitude, we have a lot of great gifts that we will give back to you uh, as you join those tiers. So go to catholictalkshow.com forward slash Patreon. All right, so let's dig into Joe. Now, again, I don't want to bash Joe Rogan. I like no. Joe Rogan. I listen to a lot of his episodes. And I think I think even in a broader sense, he's done a lot for humanity Sure, by having open forum discussions about things that people 100%. care about. Yeah. And... and literally, you know, not intentionally, but combating the, the, the media and what, what sure. they know is, you know, media that tries to control narratives and situations for whatever it is that their agenda is. So, so good for him. Yeah. But, you know, like we're going to talk about the things that he's talked about the church. Now, this first one's him talking about Catholic schools. Now, Catholic schools, I think is one of the most pivotal things besides my parents and my grandparents that ever happened to me. They are such an important factor and such a beneficial thing that happened to me. I would not be the man I yeah. am today without them. Uh, but so here's his take. This this clip is um, called Joe Rogan, Catholic Schools Terrify Me. So let's take a listen to this. Okay. Do you go to Mass on Christmas? No. No Mass at all? I go to Willy Wonka's Golden Chocolate Factory. What? No, it's all nonsense, man. Yeah. Why would I do that? I don't know. I'm just asking. Tradition, because you grew up that way. No, I never grew up that way. You I didn't? Went to, I you went didn't to have Catholic church when school. you were a kid? Yeah, we did, but it was for a very short amount of time. To say I grew up that way would be hard, because it was. I was out by the time I was out of first grade. Oh, yeah. They were talking about putting me back in for second grade, but we moved from New Jersey to San Francisco, uh -huh. and uh, we didn't find uh, a Catholic school. And it's, you know, Catholic schools cost money, too. You know? Right. Went to public school after that, but right. I was just done. I hated it. Yeah. I, I was in fear of those crazy people. And your parents didn't take you to church or make you go to they church? They did a little bit. I think the idea was back then that if you had kids, you wanted your kids to go to Catholic school. You know, uh -huh. there's a lot of people that did that in that neighborhood when right. I was little. It was just a normal thing you did. Yeah. And they were more strict. And, dude, one thing that was for sure, though, like, <laughs> I had a conversation with my mom about it once. She was like, you know, your grades were way better when you went in your Catholic school. And I was like, yeah, because it was terrified to get them wrong <laughs> they beat the out i don't want to live like that they never beat me no but they definitely threatened me really yeah they threatened me all right what are you hearing there uh i i 
don't really have a thought on it. Dude, it's you were in first grade and you made up your mind not to go to the Catholic Church? Come on. You're seven years old, six years old? Dude, yeah. no, you didn't. Yeah, you don't no, really you do didn't. stuff like that. You were able to grasp theological concepts and you were able to say, I, I've i made a decision not to go to a Catholic school at seven years old. Like, yeah, I'm thinking about my daughter, Maria, in the first grade. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, nah, I don't think no, we're having not, those conversations at all. <laughs> you know, and then, you know, he was scared. Well... What were we scared of? I went yeah. to Catholic school. Nothing to be. Do you think there's any more scary than a public school? Right. No. I mean, yeah. as a matter of fact, I think Catholic schools are. You know, every experience has been safe, open, honest. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. You know, but he's like right there, like, well, you know, I think a lot of people went to Catholic schools, and that was a tradition. But his family didn't really do that a little bit here and there. So you can see that maybe there was like a little remnant of cultural Catholicism in his family. Mm -hmm. And then he got maybe a warped view of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and just, I mean, I, I guess if he's making up stuff about being in the first, first grade like that, <laughs> there's probably something else there. Dude, I can barely tie my shoes in the first grade, let alone yeah. grasp, you know, theological systems and whether or not I accept them or reject them. Yeah. And then like he wasn't beaten or anything. Like yeah. my, my dad, when he went, like they they would they'd crank your knuckles with a you know, the sisters would crank your knuckles oh, with Oh no. Uh, he never had any problem with yeah, it. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> he never left the church. Yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah. So let's see what else he has to say. Really? Here. Yeah, they threatened to make me sit on a nail. You're gonna have to they threatened to sit on a nail. No, they didn't. In a closet. In a closet. No, they didn't. I hope you brought your blanket. They're like really mean. When you're like a little six year old kid, like that's oh, it's just a weird it's feeling. So. To be stuck with these people for nine months. And to also nine months. Me, he's able to assess the whole worldview of Catholic schools in nine months. As a first grader. And yeah, as a first grader. And even then, he admits that his grades were better there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My parents were splitting up at the time. Oh, his parents were splitting up at the time. Yeah, that's... So that maybe there's a little trauma there, right? Lots of trauma. Very confusing. Yeah. And then I uh, wanted things guy. to have order to them. So I wanted God to make sense. Uh -huh. I remember annoying people with that. Yeah? <clears throat> yeah, I'm like six years old. I'd what do you mean? I'd annoy people talking about what God wants. What do you mean? Like you would? God says this. God wants that. Like I would say that. Oh, you would bug like six years old. Yeah. Right. Because I was a little kid who's dealing with my parents splitting up, and there didn't seem to be any order in the world. And I was. Wow. Mm. That's, that's a pretty a, bold admission. You know, that's vulnerable. Well, I mean, it, it's even like even as a young kid to experience a disorder like that, to to just uniquely be attuned to the order of the mother and the father. Yeah. And missing and that to experience and then and trying to surrogate that. Yeah. Like that. I mean, that's, that's a, I think that, you know, for a young kid, we're, you know, we're talking about, you know, his grades and what he's learning and all this. That's, that's definitely the source there. Yeah. So he went yeah. to Catholic school for, for nine months when yeah. he was six years old while his parents were getting divorced and probably a lot of the negativity of that time and the not making sense of going yeah. on and wanting God to fix it and not having it has got to have ultimately affected him pretty deeply. So, I mean, I feel a lot of sympathy for this. You know, that. Oh, yeah. I, I'm thinking a little baby Joe Rogan. I'm thinking, oh, poor kid. You know, <laughs> That's, that sucks. Yeah. Poor guy. And I know his relationship with his father is really, really, really negative, too. Is it really? Yeah, from listening to him. So, that's. Oh, wow. All I, when I see this, I don't see facts, I don't see anything that's true about the negative things that he's saying. I just see someone who got hurt pretty Some experience, bad. experience, yeah. yeah. I was very nervous, right? So when I find, when I went to Catholic school, when I first got there, I was, I was happy that I was mm -hmm. going to go to Catholic school. But then as I experienced it, at <clears throat> six years old, I started going, this is ridiculous. This doesn't make any sense. I'm like, first of all, these people are so mean. They're, they're obviously being mean and nasty. They're not comforting and right. loving. And I was thinking as this... They're not comforting and loving. So he was wanting for comfort and love. Mm. He was lacking something and didn't get it. So he ascribed to them malice. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is he's an adult sort of looking back, yeah. <clears throat> you know, on it. So, what, you know, what does mean yeah. back then? You know, I mean, yeah. is it like... Sit, oh, down, sit down and quit making noise. Oh, yeah. they were terrible to me. Yeah, you know, like, I mean, like, I've got some of my kids say that, too. Like, yeah. you know, I'm punishing them or, you know. I mean, so there's no real, like, examples of, like, this, you know, sitting this on happened. a nail, like, whatever, yeah. you know. But, like, yeah, yeah, 
definitely is the div- divorce definitely is 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 a f- impacting this six year old yeah. comparing them to the way like my grandma was or my mother was like these are these ladies are nasty right like, why are they being so mean and I'm like these they don't represent God and I was like this is crazy why at and six. Then, and then you could see kids getting Even in trouble guesses, because their parents hadn't paid for their lunch, or this kind of, and there was like this really, you tell your father to get that money in. Like there was a, right. this weirdness to it that just didn't seem loving, or it didn't seem like what I thought of when I thought of you know Christ, and when I thought of right. really, it seemed to me like oh no, this is a dark little trap. What a dark little trap. Well, I don't know. <laughs> pay your pay your lunch bill, number one. But I mean. <laughs> I know for a fact that if there's kids who can't pay for the lunch at a Catholic school, that is 100% going to be covered in every yeah. program, you know. But, yeah, I feel bad for him. It sounds like he was going through a rough time as a kid. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that was only nine months. Yeah, nine months, and it just damaged and, his world. And so, probably the most traumatic experience of his life. His parents happening. divorcing. Yeah. A formative thing, yeah. yeah. And him wanting love and order and, and not being able to find it there and expecting oh. to find it there. Expecting to find it in the people. And the people. Because the people harmed him. Yeah. His father harmed him. That's right. Mother, whatever. Yeah, uh, that's pretty rough. And then so you're looking at people to bring that warmth, that love, that unity, and you just... And it wasn't there. Yeah. So you yeah. had like this... That's one of the most dangerous things is expectations, right? You expect somebody to fulfill something in you. You expect somebody to solve something for you. And that rarely happens. All yeah. of your internal emotions really are going to be controlled by yourself. And when you expect somebody to fill a piece in you... You're putting an expectation on that that almost no one can ever fill. But I mean, as a child, it's so innate to of them course. that you really can't navigate around it, right? You can't navigate. You, I mean, I mean, ultimately, your parents are, are going to fail you. They have failed you. You will experience failure in your life with other people. The you know part of the path and the journey to the the unity you you have with Christ is. You know, he he mentions the spirit of adoption. Mm-hmm. Like this is a, this is a part of his spirit, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of adoption. Like understanding that when you turn to him, that all these other things begin to take their proper place. You see that you see your parents as sinners. You you see other people as sinners. You you move beyond that into the realm of Christ. The guy I'm following was the the product of torture and sin. Sure to the point of death so that he could lead the way for us to find consolation with them, you know? Yep. So that was, that was this clip on Catholic school. So let, let's, let's get into another clip here. Uh, this one, uh, let's see what he has to say here. This is Joe Rogan, <laughs> Joe Rogan the only people in society- roasts Catholic priests. So this is a little short here. Let's see what he has to say here. They're the only people in society that are allowed to dress like wizards. And we're like, yeah, that's how he, father dresses. <laughs> father dresses like a wizard. People are going to look back at that and go, why didn't they think the outfits were weird? Why didn't they think it was silly that this pedophile dresses up like a wizard and you're not supposed to say anything to him? They're the only people. <laughs> okay. Is, that's a lot of anger. That's a lot of anger. Yeah. Now, dressing like a wizard, I'm sorry. It's cool. Yeah. Dressing like a wizard's cool. And if you can get away with it, Joe, you'd do it too. A lot of other people get away with it and do it. Yeah. <laughs> There's this thing called uh, Harry Potter. Right. I don't know if you ever recalled that movie. Yeah. It's probably one of the most wildly popular. I will of- say that Catholic priests do have one of the wildest work uniforms out there still. Oh, yeah. But that's oh, yeah. part of it. That's part of it. That's part yeah. of the, that's the good part of it. So dressing like wizards, I think that's kind of funny. It's a funny comment. It is. Well, but he calls them all pedophiles, right? And, but that's that's ridiculous. I mean, and, and especially as, as as balanced as he is in that, in other topics sure. to navigate through truth, to make a broad generalized statement about all that's of a good priests, point. like that's not him. Yeah, he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that with any other topic. He doesn't that do I've it heard. with any other topic. Yeah. So, you know, uh, angry, he's a generally angry a truth at pedophiles. Seeker, yeah. Like when this pedophile thing was going on, I. That was one of the drivers of me going to the seminary, yeah. like to just get in there and have a good, those, I mean, it's just like the, the God deserves more, yeah. you know, and I want to give him more. And I was angry. Uh, so, you know, but I didn't lose my faith. I didn't, he, he never had it. He never really was nurtured towards it. But this, this kind of like opens up like, you know, he's probably just angry, you know, that yeah. priests do that. Well, then he should be. I mean, priests doing that is a, I mean, yeah. a disgusting violation of trust and everything that's good and holy. But if you look at the the rates of 
sexual abuse in Protestant churches, in and children's right. athletics, in public schools, those rates are higher in any of those. And yeah. the, the highest rate of, of sexual offenses within family members. Yeah. I mean, so, the, the reality is sexual predators upon children are there. E there's just so much evil that they find any place to go do it. Sure. Right. So, and all the studies came out. We already know all that stuff. Now, now it's just, I guess with, with, with him talking about it, it's there, there's just still anger there. And he's not looking at this from like the forest view. Yeah. It's just like this one guy did it. So they're all like this. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see what this one is. Different theories, but nobody really knows. But Soma was obviously something that they were taking as a sacrament that would have these profound effects. That's most likely the root of all of these crazy religious experiences. These people were tripping their <laughs> And they weren't lying. They're like, God did come to them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, God did come to them out of the burning bush and spoke to them. And they, That's the other thing, the, the burning bush. They think that these uh, scholars in Jerusalem think that the burning bush is probably the acacia bush, which is rich in DMT. Oh. So that's probably this why this is on the, DMT. the metaphor, right? The, the burning bush and God spoke to them in the burning bush. That's probably what it really means. They and were tripping, but they were smoking it, tripping balls, and they met God, <laughs> and he came back with, this is the only way we're going to get along. We've got to stop raping each other. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not fair to do to him. Well, uh, I mean, <laughs> it's like, oh. So God is so have you ever noticed people so, through DMT and have you ever I'm sure you've been around people who are really deep into weed culture. Yeah. And everything goes back to weed. Like yeah. did you know that the founding fathers they separated because weed. they smoked weed and they wanted yeah. to get away from England? Did yeah. you know that the Pope wears red because he smokes weed? <laughs> did you know that the Aztecs, the reason they built temples was to smoke weed? Like when yeah. you are in that culture, you ascribe everything to it. And Joe yeah. Rogan is big into DMT in that in, yeah, that in psychedelics. Yeah. yeah, DMT psychedelics. Yeah, this is this is stoner theology. Yeah, and it's yeah, it's so funny. It's just like the 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 first thirty popes were martyred. There's thirty three, whatever you know, and then, then this three hundred years of persecution, kids, children dying for this faith that came to them and this life they had in Christ like that that was more important than their life themselves and so now we're to think that that God came to them with like some DMT and then then all of a sudden it was okay to die like that or so there's a couple a sacrament you even use the word sacrament yeah, there's a couple presumptions here that ancient uh, people were stupid that ancient yeah. people are like ooh, ooh, ooh ah, ah, and then they yeah. are like oh smoke weed and then oh I don't God. know what's going on you think these people didn't know how to get high <laughs> you think these people didn't know how to get drunk you think these these people had more knowledge of botanicals and what was around them than yeah. anybody, anybody around today yeah, yeah. so to think that they were just like I don't know I, I, we were burning a, oh we're burning a book you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we, hey, were, we, were doing, we were just smoking like we were in the sixth grade back yeah, then. Yeah, back, you know, like back when I was in, you know, a six-year-old in first grade at Catholic school, I smoked weed and I saw God. Like, no. No. So this, this is, again, such a stretch for somebody who's so usually truth-oriented, fact-finding or seeking, right? Mm -hmm. When it comes to religion, all of his best principles and his best practices go out the window. Right. So no, Moses was not... <laughs> The burning bush was not an acacia plant that happens to be high in DMT. If, if the acacia bush was high in DMT, everyone would be smoking it right now. <laughs> People are always going to look for a way to get high. So, And then he just says, a scholar in Jerusalem. It's so easy on the internet to just say, they say. A scholar. They say, a scholar says. That is... And That's then when so you have stoner theology, like it is. And then when you have happened. an audience that big, and you say they say, and then people take it as fact. You got a lot of people out there think Moses didn't have experienced anything, and then he got high. What? So then he was high for what? How long? Five years? Forty years in the desert? Like what kind of weed? You, is he really, smoking, you, you know? really think these people listen to that and they're like, yeah, yes, yes, they really? do, Ryan, a hundred percent. Oh wow! People will hear this and they're like, yeah, dude, that makes sense, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I bet Moses is out there, you know, doing bong grips and that, and yeah, religion's all a lie. It's just yeah. people getting high. Uh, I you wonder know. how many people did DMT because of him and you th screwed themselves up. So whatever. many people started DMT because he, uh, you know, espouses. So many people eat elk meat or drink Buffalo Trace because of him. <laughs> Buffalo Trace was just, you know, regular old bourbon until he started pushing and now you can't find it on the shelves. 
I just bought a bottle right? a couple weeks ago. But you, yeah, you see what I'm saying? Like that's the kind of power that something like that has. So when you use yeah. it irresponsibly and use it unfactually like this, it could really be a, a, I don't know, I think a dangerous thing. All right, so here, here's another one. Let's see. You know, man, it's like even what's going on with the Pope just recently said there's no hell, and everybody went crazy. Like, what? What did he just say? The Pope said there's no hell. He's, he's slowly bracing you for the fact that all this is nonsense. <laughs> but right now, we're going to give it a hell. Dude. Like, this is like one of, the, one of the purest examples of like the change in people's attitude towards religion. Is this real? No. Yep, yep. It says the Vatican denies that. But yeah. the Vatican did not say there is no hell. We'll find out an article where it says he did say that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out somewhere where it does support what I'm saying. 50%. He's not going to go it. back, go back in time and find an article where he did say it. Because I guarantee you he did say it. Let's just assume that one day that, see, this is what they do. They say it a little bit and then they take it back. See, okay. see what he's doing right here? He just tried to assert something. He couldn't find facts to say, to say, but here's what they do. They do that on purpose. Yeah. Like you really follow in the Catholic church all over yeah, the place. Yeah. Let's see what That's how easy he's this is. a perfect per example of somebody who reads like storylines. Right, and, it, and, and because it's the Catholic Church, he's like, "Yeah, they're mostly bad, anyways." So I, I'll so just he's say just this like, true. "Yeah, uh huh." Yeah, that's still going on. That's there. That's what it is. I'm I'm full Eddie Bravo right now. Yeah, I'm Eddie Bravo is whack. Yeah, dude, this is how they set it up. They start out with uh, 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 they tell you hell's not real, and then they say we never said that, and then a year from now they say, "Look, we're pretty sure hell's not real." <laughs> this this pope probably plays Fortnite. He's like, right? He's the pope. <laughs> the pope plays for He doesn't have the pope mobile. <laughs> He's got his Kanye. I like how arm. everyone says cool pope Francis is the cool pope when he says stuff that suits their tickling ears, too. You know? <laughs> Kanye's on. He's the cool pope. Uh -huh. He is the cool pope. He got rid of the throne. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he had a big, giant, crazy ass throne for the last guy, the creeper. He's got a gamer chair now. <laughs> 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 like one of those racing chairs yeah. with the headphones by yeah, your ears. I just got one of those. It's Pope weird. Francis in the f house. <laughs> Pope Francis has no problem with gay people either. C Pope right? Francis fighting with your little kid. Yeah, see, look how he swat. <laughs> you look at the old, look at the old throne versus the new throne. Look at the two side to side. The guy on the left is the guy they just kicked out for crimes against humanity. You, uh, you hear this? Yeah, they kicked Benedict out for crimes this guy against is humanity. Just like at this point, just. Wow. Ripping everything. And the guy on the right is uh, the new guy who's just got a, a sensible chair. Yeah. yeah, the throne is creepy, man. That is crazy. And he dresses much more conservatively too. It's he's it's, not wearing crazy wizard. It's the robes. throne of God. He's wearing like a one right? color okay. wizard it's... robe. <laughs> he, he dresses like R. Kelly on a Sunday. He still has to dress <laughs> crazy. Like if he came out in like a polo shirt and a pair of jeans. No, right? No, everybody like, hey, hey, hey! You can't be the Pope without. Magic outfit? Where's your fish head hat? Come on, bro. He's got body armor on. <laughs> He's got a hat on like a golden salmon that's coming out of the top of his head. Like, show me that hat. Look at this hat. This hat is preposterous. That's ridiculous. That's like a monster. That's a, it's a mouth of a monster. <laughs> See, but like, like that. Like a giant snake. It looks like a napkin at a restaurant when you go there and it's sitting in Oh, and it's nicely done inside yeah. one of those little rings? Yeah. <laughs> he, he probably put it on by mistake. Like, he's just like, look at me. I can't believe they're making fun of our Holy Father. This is on... This show sucks. You're making fun of our Holy Father. That's me. <laughs> You're right, Joe. You can anticipate your audience here exactly because that's exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's just, I mean, they're just making fun, but then it turns into something personal. I don't under, I can't quite put a finger on why that, I, there's got to be something else going on there. Yeah. It might be the anger with the pedophile stuff, because I've heard people just tell me, like, carte blanche, like, no. Once that happened, no. Yeah. But that you know. happens freaking everywhere. No, I, dude, I I don't, I'm not, like, yeah, telling I know, you that I know, he's, but, like, I'm, I'm saying that to him, yeah. like, in response, like, but I mean, okay, they didn't kick the last guy out for crimes against humanity, but you're going to have a bunch of people believing that, that Benedict was kicked out. Benedict resigned because he was old and couldn't deal with all the backstabbing in politics. Yeah. Um, the new chair, oh, that, 
okay, have you seen all the different chairs that the Pope sits in? It's just one example out of dozens of chairs. Every trip, yeah. every trip he goes on, they make a new chair. Yeah. And those are not solid gold. They're gold leaf. Yeah. You go and buy like a really nice, finely carved, uh, I don't know, mahogany or Brazilian rosewood chair, or you just take some regular oak chair and land it with gold leaf, you tell me which one's more expensive. I tell you for sure the rosewood and mahogany carved one's going to be more expensive than a gold leaf oak one, mm -hmm. right? So again, just, just such um, mischaracterizations and such kind of like douchebaggery. I, I don't, I didn't say that More specifically. More stories out of the last decade or so. Um, it's obnoxious behavior. It is. That's and, the definition of douchebaggery in yeah. the Webster Dictionary. Is that the Webster, di yeah. <laughs> Webster Dictionary definition? Yeah. Obnoxious or contemptible behavior. Oh, you actually looked up douchebaggery? Yeah. Oh, man. Well, that's like, awesome. I don't know if I'd say it, so I looked it up just to show you. <laughs> like, it was perfect context. So... Here's another one. Uh, hold on. What's his name? What's that comedian? Bill Burr. Bill Burr. B U R R. He's another one who's really, really anti Catholic. Let's see what he has to say. Not pissing off the invisible guy and wanting to go to the happy place and get to eat marshmallows for the rest of your fall eternity. That they are actually. It's really, it's, it's disturbing that people can still be part of that religion. You know what I mean? I, I don't understand how, you know, the stuff that they've done. So, uh, yeah, I, I would say, yeah, there's probably something going on. I don't know. Maybe he said something like, uh, hey, you know, uh, maybe we should apologize for uh, having that clam bake with Adolf Hitler. Should we uh, maybe... Clear the air with that one? That's another thing they always and like to say is that the church supported Hitler. Yeah. The church literally tried to have Hitler assassinated, mm -hmm. by the way. Uh, yeah. We actually don't help to pay for the lawyers of the people in our organization who put their heads. You know, maybe he said something like that. I have no idea. Anyways, he said, also, what are some... Some of the ways that they could make the church more interesting. For example, maybe let broads become priests. I bet more people would pay attention. Or how about letting people sit in lazy boys instead of sitting and kneeling in those terrible rock hard benches they call pews? I know, it's so dumb. The whole thing is to get you like you're not worthy. You're not worthy. You're not worthy. Get on your knees. And it's, and it's, all, it's all made up by human beings taking a guess and and other adults because they get into it as kids they they i don't know why i actually know why because i i believe that there is like a spirituality and i believe that you feel good when you do good things and i just think that you can't corral that nobody owns it you can't put a like i think that all churches should just be philosophies right Oh, what a modernist view. Like, yeah, just a philosophy. Don't have a backbone. Don't stand up for anything. Just kind of do what's good. Let, and let me do whatever I want. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's literally mm. what what this, you know, the the Western world's become, right? It's yeah. like, oh, you know, that's that's dumb. Okay, well, we'll have a church over here that does that. Yeah. I mean, so we're just pandering to people who are ignorant of the faith and don't understand you know, any any of the sacramental worship, the liturgy, like they don't understand any of that. They don't want to learn it. Yeah. All they want to do is critique it and be yeah, God's and, himself. And, and, and they also want to have, well, see, oh, he just said, well, people feel good when they do good things and stuff like that. Yeah, of course. So he's like, we should just have a church that just does that. So you just want a selfish kind of click the check mark that I did I something good. good. I feel good now. I don't have to do anything. Now I can go do whatever terrible things I do in my life or disordered things or immoral yeah. things. Yeah. He shouldn't be starting a church. <laughs> no. <laughs> lazy boys and like, yeah. And female basically priests. your comedy show. Yeah. Female priests, lazy boys. I mean, dude, just go to the Anglican church. He's a funny guy too. I've, I, I've never hilarious. heard, I've never heard him <clears throat> ever heard him talk about the same church. thing. Another guy who grew up Catholic and then is, you know, I think there's, well, a, you know, there's the family is, trauma. I mean, that's Boston. That's like the, the <clears throat> epicenter of this stuff. And these guys were from there. I think, yeah. You know, I think you're right. Yeah. Both these guys are from Boston. So you they know? probably, I mean, and they were living there when this was all going down and you know, yeah. So 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's sad. I mean, that's just they're carrying something pretty pretty profound. Pretty heavy. Yeah. Let's see what yeah. else he's got to say. Rather than this this hardened way of looking at things, um, just the amount of death that it, it has caused. Death? Where? I, I'm not saying anything. New. You guys know how I feel. In this um, finally, how about we liven up the music a bit and add some newer sounds? Maybe a little guitar and drums. Well, what you need to do is go to a Baptist church. Go to a church where you don't see any white people going in there. Um, that that would be a good one to start with, and I, and I bet you're amazing. You'll you'll hear people who pr- actually in those churches probably sing be- better than half the people who won Grammys that year. I mean, they how do, many times they do have good musicians in Baptist court, churches, oh, yeah. sticking sure. their finger in the ear, trying to act like they know how to sing. And what are they? What's behind them all the time? It's always like three black chicks. Or two black chicks and some black dude. I mean, that's where the music is. That's where it's coming from. If that's what you want, just go there. They're not going to give a right? They may look at you weird, but after a while, once they see you feeling the music, you should be fine. You should be fine. So all you should get out of church is music? I think that they should maybe update the uh, stories. Update the stories. Every once in a while. Every once in a while, update the stories. uh, Just make up some new just say, oh, you know what? God, God came back again, and the burning bush said, uh, you know, let he who never uh, illegally downloaded the song, just something to f-ing update it. I don't know what to tell you. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. Just sounds like another angry guy. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, he, I mean, he. the last three words were great. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. He's just mad about it. And a lot of these people are people who th- view themselves as very independent thinkers. Good people. They're good people. And I don't need anybody to tell me I'm a good person. I don't need anybody to tell me. I'm an independent-minded person. And I don't need morality. I, I'm a good person on my own. Yeah, it's kind of like jockeying inside of your conscience to make you... <clears throat> The place of primacy in the world and the world views, and you're right. It's there's a lot of egotism to it. Yeah. There's a lot of self assuredness, and I think there's a lot of deferral that they don't want this stuff to be true. Yeah, because if it's true, that really challenges. I think a lot of the spiritual acedia, the laziness with which they approach something so serious. Yeah, they can dismiss it out of hand, and it's easy to dismiss it out of hand and make a joke about it. Then, besides, actually validly and considerately looking at the facts, looking at the stories, looking at the historical records, right. looking at the theological and uh, you know ontological proofs, looking at Aquinas. They wouldn't do any of that. They're just like, nah, you guys wear wizard robes, so you'd be And stupid. you kill everybody. And you kill everybody. everybody. that's ever died has been at the yeah. hands of a Oh my gosh, the Crusades killed everyone. They're all dressed as wizards, and they were so <laughs> high. <laughs> they were so high on TNT. The only ones who were high was the that Hashashins. Should the, that should be the <laughs> thumbnail for our video. Yeah, I mean, an amalgamation of all <laughs> of all these perspectives into one person, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, like the uh, wow! All right, here's so we're gonna do one more clip, but before we do that, you know, I would not recommend downloading any of these clips because these are mostly filled with uh, shallow views, narrow views, uninformed views, and hurt views. But I would tell you, a good thing to download is the number one Catholic prayer app, and that's Hollow. Mm. Hollow is a trusted resource for prayer. They've taken the best of technology and the rich patrimony of prayer practices within the church over 2,000 years and put it together in an app that anyone could use to increase their prayer life. I use this app every single day. I know you do too, Ryan. Yep, yep. Hollow, is, hollow or hollow. I mean, whichever one you want to go for there. It's, but yeah, I've used this uh, increasingly hollow. in my life. Yeah, increasingly. You know. Increasingly used it. Yeah. I am How are now, you increasing? I am now on it a lot more than I was before. Okay. So it's just like, it's been such a blessing in my life that I look at the amount of time I spend on it. It's it's, it's well over 12 hours uh, a month. Really? That's, that's actually yeah. quite a bit. 12 to 14 hours a month. It's great. Yeah. So if you go to catholictalkshow.com forward slash hollow, you can try this app out 100% free and uh, see if it's something that works for you. So- uh, it's a prayer that a prayer app that we use. It's number one prayer app in the world. Over a billion prayers have been said through this app. We really recommend you try it out. So um, let's let's finish this clip. I got one more. It's one more from Bill Barr. So okay, you know, I think the reason that it bothers me too, these two, because they're both very smart. They're both very influential. I don't. I do not. They're both guys that I kind of like. I would say they're perceptive. I would not say intelligent. 
they're not unintelligent. But they're not you, unintelligent. You know, like, like, perceptive. Not. I'll grant that. But here's the thing. Like, I like these guys. Yeah. And it's like. You want to like them. I want to like them. Yeah. But when they say stuff like this, I'm like, this is just kind of dumb high school, yeah. very immature assessment of faith. It's very yeah. immature. This is the kind of stuff I heard when, you know, you're sitting around smoking weed with kids in high school. This is the same stuff. But I'm friends with people that act like that too. Yeah. You know, it's just like, they're good people. They're just, they've got this thing in their life. And you know what? If I can show them that I'm, I live, I live a, a life that reflects what I believe and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe that helps him. I don't know. Yeah. yeah that was, he's funny. He's a funny guy yeah, and he's a clever good. and perceptive guy, but you can still hear the hurt in him. Well, I grew that was, up Catholic. Yeah. That was on a podcast yeah. where he's like, you know, getting into a lot more stuff. This is a, a comedy a bit, bit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like he, but that's, that was pretty funny. Yeah. It was funny. But, it was pretty funny. but even then it still betrays <laughs> some of, Jesus. It still betrays some of these very, surface level analysis that people who think they're very clever do like, you know, Jesus wasn't white. You know that, right? That, yeah. that doesn't that destroy your worldview. Jesus wasn't white. Okay. So Jesus Levantine, who probably looked Greek. You try that on kids, man. If you yeah, want to do that. I mean. it's, very, <laughs> it's very kind of like a, a, a very juvenile perception yeah. of religion. And then yeah. they, through their influence are able to spread it and, that perp that propagates that gets yeah. embedded into people's minds, you and know? it all really does boil down to like you're you're taking you're consuming information in a way that it was never consumed before. Yeah. And now you have whole people doing their whole careers based on stuff. You have like that yeah. dude Ricky Gervais. His whole shtick is I'm smarter than religion, and I'm a smug asshole about it. And yeah. you're stupid for believing in religion, and that's his whole thing. And then people follow that vociferously and they base their worldview on these things that the comedian says. Yeah. But dude, if you're getting your theology from a comedian, don't be surprised when your theology is a joke. <laughs> right? <laughs> so well said. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of my stand-up bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, th there's just a couple clips. And like I said, I like these guys. Yeah. You know. And I think that they're guys who are having a societal impact, and they're yeah. they're clever, they're they're media savvy, they're they're funny, yeah. And it just it pains me that in every other area they can either be perceptive, funny, they can be for the good, you know, whether it's societally, whether it's for you know equity, whether it's for just relationships between people. But when it comes to the church, they have this blind spot, yeah. You know, and I've always heard that comedians often are very hurt people, mm -hmm. and they use comedy to make up for their hurt. So I think maybe that's not a surprise that these hurt people are so anti-religion. Yeah, that's a broad stroke. You know, some people are just funny. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, you're you're right. I, I, and, and if you look at their body of work, I would say it's such a very small percentage of the things that they talk about. Sure. But when they do talk about it, you it opens it's up. It's so out of character for it's them. It's out of character. It's something needs to be said. It is a self-righteous sort of like high spot in their life where mm -hmm. they can condemn, yeah, you know, the sinners and the people that are dancing around with wizard shirts on. <laughs> well, wizard, I think that kind of wraps it up for this episode. It does. So it does. Now, before we go, I want to remind everyone: you can go to CatholicTalkShow.com. There, you can subscribe to us on every platform, all the social media platforms. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you go ahead and click that like, share, and subscribe button right now. That really helps when you uh, participate that way because it helps us reach more people. Um, again, visit our sponsor, Hollow, by going to CatholicTalkShow.com forward slash Hollow, and you can download that number one Catholic prayer app for free. And then finally. If you go to catholictalkshow.com forward slash Patreon, again, you can support us financially and help us continue to grow the show. There's a lot of different tiers, things for every size budget, and we have a lot of great gifts in our gratitude. So again, I want to thank you um, for being here with us this week, and hopefully you got a laugh. Um, hopefully Kyle didn't have to work that beat button too much. <laughs> Kyle, I know <laughs> a lot do a lot, of, a lot of working on the beat button, uh, yeah. but... Uh, so thank you, Kyle, for that. But yeah. you know, this is a fun episode. I enjoyed this, but I think maybe when you're consuming media... Media is going to inherently have a lot of anti-religion in today's day and age and a lot of anti-Catholicism. So take it all with a grain of salt, you know? You know, Take it all with a discerning eye that these people are trying to get a reaction. Mm -hmm. They're trying to say something incendiary. And do your own research on this stuff, right? And do your own research on what religion actually does and purports to say. Amen. All right. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week for another episode.